Well, welcome back to Open to Truth, a podcast all about exploring big ideas and discovering truth together. My name's Clint. Hey, I'm Tony. Welcome back. Uh, a bit of housekeeping. Be sure to send in your questions for the mailbag coming up soon. I said last chance in the previous episode. This is actually the last chance, though. Hmm. Send them in if yep. you've got questions. Uh, all right. That's it, I think. Cool. Okay. <laughs> Very short bit of housekeeping. <laughs> We'd love to hear from you for the upcoming yeah. mailbag episode. Look, I'm jazzed for this episode mm -hmm. because... Or how about this? I had, mm -hmm. I had a... Um, oh, he's maybe, some, maybe some stat updates. Oh, you I was got just stats? Thinking. <laughs> yeah, please. I'd love to hear the stats. Because uh, you can... You know, maybe you don't know, like, how... Who else is listening to this thing? Yeah, yeah. Is Are you just, the only one? Is it maybe, just me? Maybe you've wondered. <laughs> uh, so right now, last time I checked, there's been about anywhere from 1,800 to 2,000 views a month. On YouTube? Uh, between... Oh, the downloads, the but, audio, and the... Yep. Sweet. Okay. So that's kind of really? cool. Yeah. 1,800 to 2,000 a month. Great. Whoever you are. That's neato. Yeah. Thanks for watching. Yeah. You know, we probably got like 1,500 of those from the uh, antinatalists. Who all wanted to watch that yeah, one? There was episode. like six hundred of those. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Not okay. every episode gets that. Yeah, yeah. We'd like, we'd love that. <laughs> um, but just the amount of people listening to a given episode. The open to truth community. Yeah, that's awesome. Cool. So that's that's a little update. Yeah, glad to have you. Yep. Thanks for joining us on this journey. We're just getting started. So I was going to say I'm jazzed for this episode because this is a topic that. You and I first started talking about a few years ago when you lived in Chicago. In fact, I remember where we were because you were starting to process this and I did not want to hear it. I did not want to go down this road. Mm -hmm. I thought it was absurd and I didn't like where it might lead. And gradually I became persuaded and we should just reveal what the topic is because I feel like you have a similar reluctance still I do. to dive into this conversation. And why is that? Because uh, I'm living in sin. <laughs> and you know it. <laughs> uh, okay, the topic is... The topic is animal cruelty slash should you eat meat, I think is the, the main question I want to answer. Yes. Should, should should Christians eat meat or should you eat meat? Just should you, yeah. I th well, when I first came to this question, I did approach it from like a, as a Christian looking at Jesus and the Bible, what what's my guidelines there? So I'd like to at least uh, okay. touch on that just a little. Mm. How would How should Christians think about eating meat? But in general, I'd love a broader discussion about right. the industry and should any of us be eating meat. So, yeah, I think this was when when we were first talking about it back then when I was in Chicago. There were just a number of these documentaries coming up about the horrors of the um, factory, farming. factory farming. What are some of the big docos there that people would need to go watch? Do you remember the names? I don't. Oh, okay. Well, I can just name some that I thought were relevant, but I don't know for sure if those are the ones. Oh, okay. I'm thinking of like Forks Over Knives, Cowspiracy. Oh, I haven't um, heard of those. Uh, I don't know. Okay. There's, there's several. There's a bunch. Anyway, yeah, if yeah. you Google factory mm -hmm. farming documentary, you'll find, find them. And yeah, uh, the imagery of the animals in really cramped conditions, mm -hmm. uh, the pretty grisly lives that Which, they lead. And I didn't I was ignorant to almost all of this when you first brought it up. You told me the story about the chickens and they check to see if it's what a boy or a girl and they just chuck the ones they don't want in the grinder. Yeah. When the little little baby chicks. Little chick yeah. chicklings just immediately dead. Couldn't believe that. Well, and yeah, I think that one is because there's two they've uh with unnatural selection. Mm -hmm. uh, they've done breeding of different types of chickens. So there's good egg-laying chickens, yeah. and then there's good old meaty big-breasted chickens. Yeah. And I think they're taking, in, in that case, if I'm not mistaken, that's selecting for the female big breasts, right, okay. and they chuck out the males. I, I think yeah, there's something like that. Uh, so either way, there's... Certainly, well, I saw it happening on the documentary maybe it was all smoke and mirrors but it really seemed like they were throwing baby chicks in the grinder that's uh, rough man uh I'm, i don't know if we need to go through all of the uh, can we go through a few though horrors i do want sure. people to be aware of some of the horrors because i was not aware yeah. and many of us aren't like i think a large part of this discussion is that we are so disconnected from the process of how we get our meat mm -hmm. that like we even use the word meat we call it meat yeah, right? we the phenomenon of euphemism mm. was a that I didn't really think of that before watching the documentary. Yeah, uh, that we have created little words to Pork. even further separate us from our food. Beef, it's really yeah. cow. It's and cow pig. flesh. That's yeah. yeah. Now we've stuck with chicken, but yeah. even there, there was poultry. 
Yeah, sure. Uh, but for- so, so that's part of it is we, we think meat, we go to the store, we see it packaged, we buy it, we cook it, tastes good, whatever. We it, doesn't, don't think, it doesn't look like an animal? No. And we don't immediately see, and really we don't see unless we go looking for it, exactly how we are getting that meat and what's going on in the factories. So if we can hit just a few more horrors to set up the discussion sure. before um, we dive even, in. Even the branding, uh, I think at our local Giant Eagle, there's a brand called Happy Farms. And on the picture... <laughs> Is a big red barn, and there's a big open pasture with a cow and a chicken, and they're they're smiling. Happy farms. And we get, like, if you ask any adult, I think people understand that, like, animals would need to die mm-hmm. in order for you to eat them, right? Yeah. So it's not like they're totally clueless. Like, okay, I get that you have a smiling cow. If you really press them on it, like, yeah, that cow didn't, he's not smiling anymore. Yeah, he's dead. He's dead, yeah. But it goes, it's worse than that. It's presenting this, like, pretty... A uh, dishonest picture of what the farm, like ninety some percent of the meat comes from these not happy farms, yeah. where the animals lead pretty miserable lives in a number of ways. So just back to chickens, um, certainly some of the, I think the non-free range means mm-hmm. that it's in a cage, yeah, and it spends its whole life in a cage, and it's being genetically modified to just be puffed up when it's in this cage and can't move. Can't turn around, like a small cage, yeah. Yeah, it spends its whole yeah. life doing something very unchicken like Yeah, sitting there, pumping out eggs or whatever. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, I think that might be the same for a lot of cows. Maybe they get some time out in the yard, like a prison, mm-hmm. but it's mostly you're, it's hooked up to these machines, and obviously, like, that can cause irritation on the udders and a mm-hmm. number of diseases. Uh, certainly many of these things die yeah. uh, due to complications in the whole machinery. And and frankly, like our the consumption rate of Americans is, con- has contributed to this these techno- technological advances mm-hmm. uh, because the demand is so high. Oh yeah. They need they've they need to scale. Need to yeah. meet that demand. Yeah. There's economic incentive to meet that demand, develop these technologies that don't really consider the welfare of the animal. They just maximize And so capital. we're maximizing meat, we're maximizing eggs, we're maximizing milk uh, to the detriment of... The quality of life of conscious creatures. Is that, is that a fair enough Yeah, that's a good foray? summary. That's a good summary. That kind of sets up the, the situation. So there's... Oh, you know... Oh, sorry. One mm. more that, that really got me was... Mm. Um, I saw imagery... And again, I... I have not done the research to see how prevalent some of these more graphic images were. Uh, so just heads up, this one's pretty rough. But they would take like the baby piglets and a worker would just without anesthesia rip off the genitalia of the males. Uh, what? So that they're not like, pro- and they're like, these little piglets are just screaming their fool heads off. Who are the workers who are doing this? How do you, I'm wondering how much I'd have to get paid to be willing to do that. To an animal. Yeah, yeah. Jeez. I don't know. Man, I guess you get desensitized to it after a while. Mm-hmm. I mean, yeah, that's the thing, right? We do get desensitized to it. Yeah, there's something even more um, worrisome about that than the chicken, even though the chicken dead in the grinder. Yeah. It's like, man, you that's worse, obviously. Yeah. Sorry, the- I'm laughing that you didn't say, even though the chicken's dead. <laughs> even though that chicken dead. <laughs> Sorry. Continue. Uh, it's worse. It feels it's just more unsettling. Like man, the, it's this conscious pain. Clearly, it's, it's shrieking, suffering while it's still alive. Yeah, yeah and uh, yeah. it's is that it might that might be necessary to meet the current demand of meat in our culture. Mm-hmm. Um, hopefully, uh, we pray technology would get to the point where that isn't necessary to meet the demand. But maybe, I, and I, the thrust of the documentary is do your part to lessen demand, mm. namely. Do not participate. Buy less. In food from factory farms. Vote with your wallet. Don't support the industry. Yeah. So that's the main argument for it. There are others that, for a number of reasons, I don't find as compelling. Like, Mm. a lot of these documentaries will spend a fair bit of time looking at the environmental impacts and, like, enormous shit rivers that come out of pig farms that are bleeding into our waterways. And, like, that... It appears troubling. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know what's gone into solving it. I know that, like, I produce my own sort of rivers into my toilet, and somehow that's taken care of. Yeah. So I don't know if like, like yeah, there's, yeah. there's, are there ways to treat that water? And I don't, I just don't know all the ins and outs. And I've heard a lot about 
cow flatulence. The methane, yeah. Destroying the ozone layer. I just don't know. Yeah. I want to focus on the animal welfare. I, I'm interested in focusing there. Just the, the suffering of conscious creatures and our responsibilities there. Yeah. Um, and so... Sorry, I used profanity there. Just kind of slipped like, out. That's a free speech, man. It's all right. Um, probably didn't cause harm. I think you're okay. <laughs> um, so let's think how to slice this up. When you first brought this up to me years ago, my reaction sort of from the Christian tradition was to think, okay, what, what's been permitted for me through scripture or, and I, wow. my head immediately went to look, Jesus ate meat. He apparently ate fish. He went fishing even after his resurrection, he's eaten fish on the beach. Could, so, you, could a snotty person deny it? Like, is there any sentence, declarative sentence of Jesus ate fish? Yeah. Oh. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. He broke off definitely after the resurrection. He's cooking fish for them on the beach. And, and did he eat it? Um, <laughs> okay, well, someone fact check me on that. I'm pretty sure he ate the fish with them there okay. on the beach because he cooked them brekkie. I'm mm -hmm. pretty sure. But maybe he just served it. Either way, he was involved in the prep, in the catching and the preparation of fish, mm -hmm. which is an animal that has died. So yeah. here and, is... And uh, if someone's not as worried about fish, uh, I, that's understandable. Maybe we can get there with mm -hmm. uh, what degree of consciousness... How much uh, suffering is a creature capable of experiencing? But man, the factory fishing is pretty... Uh, like bizarre oh. to say the least as well. So yeah. it's basically just these big vats Same of thing. like thousands of fish. Swarms of fish. They're swimming in their own feces. And yeah. Like for whatever degree you imagine a fish living in an ocean, living a cool fish life, this is not the opposite of that. Yeah. yeah. So here was an example of the God man, the perfect man, the virtuous man, apparently engaging in the slaughter and eating of fish, an animal. So... I lent on that for a while as being like, well, Jesus ate me. It can't be that bad mm -hmm. to just eat animals. If we want to start, is it wrong to ever eat an animal? Regardless of the factory farming thing, maybe that's, maybe we're in a unique situation where we should mm -hmm. boycott that industry. No, Jesus, I don't think would eat pork, but for religious reasons. Maybe, but then like he, he did a lot of stuff he wasn't supposed to. Okay. He was eating wheat on the Sabbath and All right. maybe he would eat pork just to annoy the Pharisees. I don't know, but... Either way, maybe, uh, can we start here as a, is it ever okay to eat an animal? Rick, let's set aside the factory farming for a moment mm -hmm. and just talk about animals in general. Sure. Okay. Anything we ever eat is dead, generally, uh, plants or animals. We're all eating dead things. And for is that our, true? I think it is, right? I think so. For us to live requires death. Death of an organism. Mm -hmm. And us consuming that. So the concern becomes... If we have the choice between consuming conscious organisms or unconscious ones like plants, who we don't really have any reason to think they're conscious. Some people who do, I have yet to be persuaded that plants are conscious. But uh, wouldn't it be better to eat the, if we can, eat the creature that is not experiencing conscious suffering okay. and pain? Let's just camp there for a second. Mm -hmm. So you said, if we can, meaning what? Um, I'm wondering, is there... Is my survival more valuable than the survival of an mm -hmm. animal? And if the, like, is it a nutritional argument? Meaning, like, uh, my health? Oh, I was going to say life, but yeah, like in a matter of, mm -hmm. I'm taking it to the extremes. Like, when would it ever be okay? Surely, if it's ever okay to eat an animal, it would be, I'm on the brink of death, there's no plants around, and there is an animal. Yes. Am I justified eating that animal? Oh, 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 okay. That's where I'm starting from. Um... My intuition says yes. That's what my intuition... Mm -hmm. And that if I was going to do that, that I should... I think I would emotionally have a hard time with it, but I should make it as painless as possible. Is there a cutoff point of, uh, like, what if it's just a chimpanzee? I mean, look, if we're talking about what would Tony's psychology be capable of doing to survive, yeah. I don't know if I could kill a chimp to survive. Maybe. Sure, sure. But imagine we can make it the thought experiment, however... Uh, we can facilitate that decision however you'd like. We can okay. give you a red button where you turn around and it just drops yeah. dead. Yeah, you know? yeah. okay, okay. Um, okay, I'm just going to speak from intuition. This yep. is how the show works, right? And yeah, then yeah. we just try to figure it out. There's something in me that says the value of a human life exceeds the value of an animal's life. And I want to point to the image of God there. That I am somehow the the depth, mm -hmm. the complexity and depth of my conscious experience far exceeds that of any animal, um, 
and that somehow there's a dignity inherent in the human mm -hmm. that exceeds that of any animal as well. Now, maybe that's my Christian specious uh, Imago Dei roots, but I do kind of think that. Um, mm -hmm. So that if it came down to it, me or the chimp, I think my life's more valuable than the chimp's life. But it's interesting, like, even though I think there are some listeners that would just, can we move on from this one? Like, it's so obvious that you should be able to do that. Oh, but you there'd know, be people who wouldn't think it's obvious, right? I know, and and I'm I'm I want to bolster that idea a bit more. That uh, there are plenty of ethical boundaries that you would not cross, even though your life's on the line. Mm. Right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, like, just think of all the things a crazed gunman pointing a gun to your head yeah. could demand that you do. Slaughter that, that infant, or I kill you. Uh, you're gonna have to kill me. Yeah. You know. Yeah. So, yeah, um, yeah. so we're saying that this doesn't reach that level and yeah. i agree with your intuition yeah but can we defend it uh i don't know i don't know i don't know if i can bolster it more than my intuition but i do wonder similar to actually where some of those antinatalists were coming from if i if it, if i'm not in that extreme situation yeah or what does it mean for your ethical principles does it just mean uh, i'm permitted to take conscious life when when there is no alternative that's that's what i was trying to lay out yeah something like that and now i want to know if there are alternatives am mm -hmm. i ever permitted in taking conscious life and that it starts to get less obvious to me and this is as someone who loves the taste of bacon like I get it. I love meat. But mm -hmm. when I try to think when and why and how am I justified in, in fact, I, I'll life, just confess that I'm largely on a carnivore diet currently. Right. I I actually don't remember the last time I've had a green vegetable. Almost it might exclusively have been, meat. It might have been a month. Yeah. Wow. Just, wow. Yeah. <laughs> when was the last time you saw a doctor? <laughs> it's been a while. It's been a while. <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So... Yeah, I'm not. Back to my, but just to like at the beginning, I confessed my sin. I I feel relatively convinced of the truth of the mm. initial argument. And now, is that because uh, of the weakness of will? Are you saying you feel convinced about the factory farming case, and that's why, or just in general? I want to know if there is an option to avoid eating conscious creatures. Are we still morally permitted to eat them? Are you saying? Oh, oh, oh. Um. Imagine no, no. not permitted. Uh, I would want to hear more about what those alternatives are. Uh, yeah, v veggies and beans and chickpeas and... And to, I guess to my point, like the nutrition part is what interests me a little bit more. Right. And, and it interests me, but I also don't feel equipped to talk about it much. <laughs> You're saying rather than the limit case of survival, kill the chimp or die. Yeah, because we're just not in it. Yeah, if we're talking about maximal health, uh, can you attain that on a vegan diet mm -hmm. or a vegetarian diet and is it and is it precisely our modern technology that has afforded us the ability to forego meat nutritionally yeah namely that i could get it through vitamins i can supplement to get the protein i need or, and this is relatively new in human history we can all I acknowledge i think mm -hmm. that like eating the eating of meat arguably is what led to the homo sapien development mm -hmm. and the brain having the necessary nutrition to grow and evolve in that way. Mm -hmm. We'll have a guest on soon enough. Oh yeah. Or maybe even before this one that we'll talk all about that. Yep. Uh, but, but nowadays we have the option to go full vegan. I mean, there's people who do it and are in great health bodybuilders with the right yeah. supplements and the right, I mean, you've got to be intentional. You can't just like, stop eating meat and do nothing it's not just any old vegetable like yeah, they're, yeah. they're really particular about like okay i need to get my these legumes and yeah yeah you're not just slamming iceberg lettuce right, <laughs> for right. every meal totally <laughs> that's yeah um uh so yeah where do you want to go with this me, um go there's because the nutrition piece i I'll, I'll just be honest i was vegan like during that time i was i think vegan yeah i was vegan for six months yeah i did six months too and i did all the soy alternatives yeah a uh, little soy nuggets instead of the chicken nugget yeah i forewent dairy so i was full on i think that's the hard part actually cheese man mm. hard to give up the cheese yeah and there's you know there's vegan alternatives mm -hmm. to cheese and i just found like and i'm not saying 
I'm just reporting a story. Yeah. I don't want to say anything about normative about this it. This is your experience. I, I nah, it's rich coming from, I gained a lot of weight. Mm-hmm. Uh, I found myself gravitating toward bread, oh. which I think that's the reason for it instead yeah. of the vegetables. Yeah. Um, I found it really difficult to reorient my life around certain meals. Like I just was eating bread a lot. Wow, um, this poor guy. <laughs> That's not how they do I, it, it. It really rocked my notion of what a what dinner and what a meal was. Oh, because I just, if it didn't have meat, it feels like a snack. Right? Yeah, it doesn't feel like a meal without a solid protein. That's right. And it was yeah. so like the psychological barrier to that proved extremely difficult. Um, I just found I wasn't enjoying food. I found the. Uh, I did not find that. I I enjoyed food fine. I actually didn't find it too difficult to swap out like real meatballs for vegetarian meatballs. I can live with that. That's fine. Mm-hmm. What I found challenging was the social aspect of like going over to someone's place for dinner and them feeling like they need to provide me with a vegetarian option mm. or like I just didn't want to put people in that weird spot where now they need to pre- prevent sorry prepare a whole yeah. extra meal just for me. So uh-huh. it's my choice. I'll just have salad. That's okay. You don't need to make something special for me. But it did. It became a thing, which was yeah. I don't know. There'd be some who would say, "Good should be a thing. Let them let your veganism shine, and so maybe they'll form feel of social protest convicted yeah. too." Yeah, yeah. No, totally. So why did you stop after the six months? Do you remember? Uh, just a culmination of those factors of mm-hmm. I want a real meal, and like, and I don't need to sugarcoat it at all. Like, and I really enjoy the taste of meat, and mm-hmm. I like it a lot, and yeah. I wanted it. I, what, how did I end up off the rails? I did about six months and then we went to Australia. And when I was in Australia to visit, I was like, man, I want a sausage roll and a meat pie while I'm here. It's like the Australian classics that Mm -hmm. I've missed for years. So I'm going to have those and I'm going to have a kebab. And then we went to Mexico soon after that. I was like, well, it's all inclusive. I'm going to have some tacos while I'm here. It's Mexico. And then it just. You're paying for the meat. yeah, yeah, Yeah. Yeah. And so then it. I never hopped back on the wagon. But it's been lurking there in the background. Yep. Every time I do my grocery shopping, there's a little voice. It's like, you should do the vegan one instead. Mm. But then it's like, well, am I dragging my wife into this? And does she have a choice? And she has a choice. She can eat what she wants. But Right, right. But it's not as simple as me just saying, all right, vegan. Or at least has proven not to be that simple in my life. No, I failed to do it. Failed to do it. Though I don't have a good retort to the arguments. So here is an admission of moral failing, um, which I think is excellent intellectual honesty from you on this podcast and from me. Maybe not courage. <laughs> well, no, it's intellect. It's just not like morally courageous or yeah. No. Um, intellectually, I I concede. Yeah, you're being very honest. Yeah, that. So. Well, here's another rationale I've given, and maybe this helps transition to another piece of the conversation. I'm not in principle against like the killing of an animal to get its meat. Mm-hmm. What really bothers me is the the what seems like unnecessary suffering in the factory farming system. The conscious uh, during its life, its life being bad. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, like, I there's something that makes a lot of sense to me about hunting mm-hmm. and. Um, the norms around that and like from an evolutionary history that being part of our species there's even particularly um, like environmental boons to hunting Mm -hmm. and curbing overpopulation of certain species I mean have you seen a video of I mean you can pay to fly in a helicopter with an assault rifle and shoot wild hogs in Atlanta just out in a field because they want you to kill them too many of them they destroy crops right that you as a vegan want want the crops and so we are mowing down thousands and thousands of these razorbacks all the time wow just left dead on the feet in the field i did not know that yeah maybe sometimes they go down and harvest the meat but some i mean sometimes there's just a bunch of them they're just mowing them down uh no i'm with you about the the quality of the life and um, so so uh oh, an elk's life Though cut short mm-hmm. and though painful in its last moments, Maybe. concede that uh, unless a skilled a skilled hunter would make it not that painful. Right, and it's I've seen be less and, I, and I've heard of animal. skilled archers tar- talking about, um, you know, feeling 
bad if they miss for a shot. being unexcellent on their shot yeah, and causing yeah. suffering. You know? Oh yeah, yeah, they do. Uh, that like and so and then me bringing that that's so much food, dude, a full elk. Yeah, yeah, and that can feed your entire family for a year if you're operating on a consequentialist software, which is I think important. And maybe that flew over the head. Sorry, of um, judging morality based on the consequences. Yeah. Uh, that starts to become an equation that's not obviously wrong. Yeah. Brief, uh, fine little elk life, brief suffering, dead. Provision for the family. Provision for a family of five for a year, however much you get. And, and can I just add too, uh, the alternative would be that the elk would die in some other way, potentially torn apart by predators or... Who knows how they might die of natural causes. Yeah. But either way, the, the quick arrow or the quick gunshot is kind of a mercy, merciful way to kill them, or it's least a... Oh, dude, you know what happened? Mm. Here's what happened. I I tricked myself philosophically to where I became less bothered by it. Oh. And it started with this line of reasoning, like thinking through the consequentialist framework and about the hunting scenario and how that seems... Per like there's a version of that that seems permissible. Oh, yeah. And it's because I was able to localize, like, okay, it's me and my family and that beast. Mm. And it just started to make a little bit more sense about how that's okay. Whereas I almost wonder if from the outset, again, I could be wrong, that you just set it up to where there is no argument that could be said in favor of it, in favor of the eating of factory farm meat by the framing of the problem. Mm. Because Clint is not guilty of the entirety of the factory farming industry by the eating of this package of meat. Mm -hmm. That can't be, right? That seems to betray a scope issue. Mm -hmm. Like, um, is, I don't know, maybe you'd, someone would disagree, but a guard in the Nazi camp that do perpetrates this cruel act on a Jew, mm -hmm. is that person guilty of the entirety of the Nazi regime? Or just that. Yeah. So like so when I let's say I don't know I don't know how many pounds of meat I eat, nor how many pounds are in a cow. But let's just say I'm gonna spitball, let's say I have a pound a day, so I eat three hundred and sixty five pounds of meat a year. Probably more. <laughs> Probably more, man. Frankly. <laughs> uh I think cows are more than that. Of course. I would think so. Yeah. A, th a thousand? Yeah. So I am guilty of a third of a cow. Per let's year. Say. And when I think of it like that, for now that starts to feel less bad. Yeah. That I've, I, I own a sliver of the conscious pain of the animals. Mm -hmm. I do I fully own the entire ripping off of the piglet genitalia? Is well, that soul? That, well, surely not. Well, I don't know, but, but that that seems that to me changes the moral. Uh, mathematics. Are you you are responsible to the degree that your wallet has supported the industry, but not responsible for all of what goes on in there. I mean, you you didn't command the ripping of genitals off. You didn't do the ripping of the genitals. Yeah. Uh, but you are supporting it, the industry. And the the industry is more likely to continue given the fact that it has received a few of your dollars. Okay. Now, when you go there. With the and I get I get I totally see how this can appear rationalizing my yeah. bad behavior. Yeah, and I already admitted that I feel sinful. Yeah, yeah. But let me just run Please, with it. Yeah, let's go. When you do that, when you go to the money thing, now you have exploded my moral demands yeah. to such a degree that it starts to seem implausible that that's really required of me. But here's here's what I'm. I know that you already know where I'm headed, but for the audience, okay. uh. There are a host of products mm -hmm. that I don't fully investigate every nook and cranny of how that thing got in my hand. Mm. I I don't really know the evidence about it, but I've certainly heard like the rumblings of uh, smartphones mm. are produced. Ha, there's uh, some suffering along the way of smartphone production mm -hmm. that I would uh, not be to not tolerate in my hometown. Yeah. Like if I knew there was a sweatshop and people were jumping out of windows, yeah. would rather commit suicide than work there. You I've heard stuff like the that. Business. Yeah. Um or like the movie Blood Diamond. Mm -hmm. And the, and like I bought my I bought my wife a diamond. Mm -hmm. Um for our engagement, our wedding. 
little a little guy. Yeah. Couldn't get the big one. I couldn't get the blood diamond. Probably would have if I had, if I had the money, the billions of dollars. Uh you're saying the scope of investigation that would be required. I, it would, for you? it would um, block me from almost any purchase. Yeah, I just I'm so far removed from that. I'd have to do hours and hours and hours of research. Maybe morality demands that. That mm -hmm. could be. Mm -hmm. But the more I started thinking that way, I'm like, oh, is that really what morality requires of me? And yeah. So here's <sighs> okay. I hear you. My response is that's true. You might be ignorant about the blood diamonds and the phones and whatever, but you're not ignorant about the meat. At least not anymore. You have done the research. You have learned how that got there. Mm -hmm. And now you have a responsibility. You have the burden of knowledge. Too late. Mm. You have turned over that stone and now you are confronted with an ethical choice. Hmm. I reckon. Now I'm interested in walking through to what degree are these animals conscious and able to suffer? Because guys like a... Again, I bring him up all the time, but he's very influential in my life, guys like William Lane Craig, Bill Craig, I've heard him talk about animal suffering as being, uh, they lack the, the awareness that they, they are suffering. So although they clearly respond to pain, animals respond to pain, they yelp, they wince, they avoid noxious stimuli. I think we can agree that not all, or we have an intuition at least, that not all animals have an equally rich inner experience. Mm. So... When I compare, for example, the life of an earthworm to the life of my dog, the yeah. it seems like I'm seeing a more robust conscious entity in the dog. I'm seeing personality, I'm seeing emotions, I'm seeing fear, guilt, happiness, playfulness, all that. The worm... But I have very limited experience with the worm. It's, it's <laughs> most, it just seems like something that just responds to stimuli. Yeah, there's got to be some... There has to be some interaction with the environment happening, mm -hmm. some base level consciousness of pressure and warmth and some seeking out of nutrients or something. But man, it's just not the same level as the uh, as the dog at all. So then I think about like I see these videos and gifs and stuff on Reddit of cows that are I mean, they have every bit have a play circuit like the dogs do. They can get they can get the zoomies just like dogs can, and they mm -hmm. can be affectionate and cuddle with humans like dogs can. And I haven't spent much time around cows, so I don't know what the limits of that are. I don't know if you can. They train. seem to miss their young when taken from them. Yeah, which is a whole. I don't think we mentioned that a whole right. part of it of uh, young parents separated from children, or yeah, an animal's ability to grieve or something. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know. I think a lot of it we have to speculate about, like. I don't know what we can definitively say about an animal's inner experience. Um, I know there's plenty of people who would say dogs don't experience time the same way humans do, and maybe. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know how you would find that out. Well, the I've heard in, in a separate literature, just in the philosophy of mind, mm -hmm. I mean, there are... Phil you, you might be so inclined to think through the arguments of why, do, why should Clint think that Tony has any kind of sure. mental life similar to mine. Like, yeah. what what's your argument against solipsism, mm. that you are the only existing conscious being? Mm -hmm. Well, there's reasons to not think that. Presumably, uh, you behave in many of the same ways that I do when I'm in a certain situation, so I can uh, infer, infer yeah. that you are having a similar type of mental state. Okay. I don't. I do not know for certain that right. even you, who are, are very similar to me in the kind of thing... Mm -hmm. um, so I, th I think the same reasoning goes for the lesser animals, if you will. Yep. Well, certainly, I mean, some animals seem like they uh, experience suffering more than other animals, or at least they they express mm -hmm. it. Like, like if I were to hit a chimpanzee's finger with a rock, yep. it, I've, I'd imagine it doing this very similar thing that I would do. I think do. it would shriek at Recoil, you. Recoil, yeah. shrieking. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, you think, yeah, you think about, I don't know, and if you've seen an animal in pain, like a dog or a deer or something, it's hard to watch. Like your heart goes out to them to see them suffering like that. Less so with like a, I don't know, a sea sponge. I don't know mm -hmm. if they're considered an animal or like a, what is it, an urchin, the spike ball thing? Like yeah, yeah. you cut that open, it's not going to scream. Uh, it can't. <laughs> it's yeah. not probably going to recoil because it can't. I mean, even a fish. I mean, I'm right. relatively unacquainted with marine life and the aquatic. Yeah. And I don't know, does their eyes bulge out a little bit more? Like if <laughs> when you're they get hooked in the mouth and cutting off their fins or something. Just 
Yeah. And it's just so so I think where this is relevant to our discussion of like if it is ever permissible to eat an animal or eat meat. Mm-hmm. My intuition is I would want to eat the animal that is incapable of suffering or the the animal that suffers the least. I don't want to I want to avoid the higher order complex animals because of the suffering I think that they're capable mm. of experiencing. And again, I we touched on this earlier but now it feels now it feels more important to bring in and that's just what kind of ethics are you bringing to the table? Is mm. it like a consequences based ethic where I'm just weighing the net yeah. pleasure over pain versus like a rights based thing where like if you have this kind of psychology or consciousness in your experience, you have a right to not have it be extinguished. Yeah, or, or tainted um, with suffering. Right. Yeah. So I don't know wh- which of those to do you feel like is informing your thought about why you shouldn't be doing it which two sorry the rights the uh, rights versus consequences rights i think i think that's where my gut goes is Mm -hmm. if i i have the sense that i as a conscious agent have a right to Mm -hmm. continue existing and to not have crazy suffering Because it's a different kind of moral calculus you're doing. On the one hand, it'd be like, to what degree is the suffering of the animal? And it's like fear upon being stabbed in the neck and bled out. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, versus the pleasure and sustenance I would get from eating its flesh later or my family's. That's a different kind of thing you're doing of weighing versus just uh, that you should never do it because they have this feature. Namely, they can experience... There's some pleasure and pain. Violation of a right or something. Yeah. So like, okay, so which ones then have that right? Like, mm. do we Well, where do you draw the line, you mean? Yeah, I guess so. What can I eat? You're taking away a lot of my food. Yeah. Tony. Yeah. Well, I'm t- we already draw the line somewhere, right? Like you're not comfortable eating dogs. Would you be comfortable eating a dog? Yeah. Okay. Well then you're the exception. <laughs> Most of us. Are I would I, w- I would. I mean i I might eat that dog if he keeps barking. <laughs> <laughs> Um. Yeah, you would. I see I, something I wouldn't be just because of the relationship I have with my dogs. I feel like I've come to understand the canine mind at a mm-hmm. certain level where I would not be comfortable eating one. Mm-hmm. But but a cow. I have. A, I, I have. I do have a harder. Um, there's a mental block there of. Um, like imagining a factory farm full of dogs and them suffering. That worries me more. Okay. You're so more ex- concerned about the dogs in the factory farm than the factory farm of cows. It's, yeah, I think yeah. so. It might be uh, just I'm, maybe it is the exposure, and I'm more, more attuned con- to con- the, like how their faces change and mm-hmm. the looks of emotion. But I don't can't read a cow as well as you can read a dog. No, yeah. Which yeah. Uh, does that? Though, but going back to our earlier evidence chain, that's what makes me. That's part of the reason I ascribe mental properties to begin with is observing response to stimuli yeah. and expression and yeah that's how you infer it so there is some there's something to that that i'm i'm less inclined to want to do that to a dog because they do more things yeah. that are like me than a cow does right now maybe i would think more like that about a cow if you spent I, more time with them yeah. built relationships with them yeah, yeah but there's limits right like how can you build a relationship with an earthworm probably not not like you can i've never had one happy to see me when i get home <laughs> yeah. we don't eat horses okay I, so yeah like what are the main uh this pro- what you're saying would rule out probably most of the farm animals. Anything with a brain? Well, oh, what counts as a brain? But like, wh- what about chickens? Do- Man, they always seem. This is, sounds really unscientific and yeah, ph- not very philosophical. But just the the raw, like when you look at them, uh, they're just always kind of look surprised and, <laughs> and just jittering around. Yeah, and, yeah. See, but how much of this, and again, this applies, it cuts both ways. It goes to the dog thing too. How much of this is us anthropomorphizing animal? Like, is my dog really smiling? Well, it's probably panting and it's pulling its gums back. Mm-hmm. And I read that as, oh, it's smiling, you know. And there's a, so not only is there like the psychological, mental uh, inferences I'm making about your mental state just based on what you're doing, but even there, the same sort of inference I'm making about your psychology you can do the same thing with biology which is a, an important part here mm-hmm. so th- there it's not just a mental thing 
like there are pieces of me that contribute to my sensation of pain and having negative experience. Yeah, yeah. Sometimes in fill mind literature, just C fibers. My right. C fibers are firing, and yeah. that leads to the mental state of this is painful. Yeah. And I'm sure that there is that going on in a lot of these creatures yeah. as well. And so that might lead you to infer, just in case anyone is like, Oh, animals don't really feel pain like we do. Well, this is ah. well, this is my point though. Back to the chickens, they might look kind of shocked and whatever, mm -hmm. but they've got the circuitry there to experience pain. Exactly. I mean, yeah. if you slowly drive a screwdriver in, they're going to hate that. You mm -hmm. know, that was a really cool oh, wow. thing. I was just thinking of like, <laughs> I don't. Apparently, there's a really <laughs> sick part of my mind that went straight why'd to you, screwdrivers. Why'd you do that to the chicken? <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking about what would really be painful. Oh, well, that sure. would be. Yeah. yeah. Sorry. Was, You're doing a lot of housework. And that was dark. I'm up, I'm interacting with screwdrivers a bit. Yeah. <clears throat> so what's still on the table for you, man? I, Fish? Now, there have, I have, well, there that's are, been that's a, a thing. thing. Pescatarian. Pescatarian. And the the feeling there is the fish just doesn't seem as capable of suffering as some of these other... But some of my good vegan friends would say, why I take the gamble? Or on the side of... Which is a powerful yeah. argument. I mean, if there's a chance that you are inflicting the suffering on the animal, then... Avoid Again, that. needlessly. Needlessly. Yeah. If you really can get the same health benefits or what have you, and you can survive, yeah, with without it. So, I don't know what that leaves on the table here in 2021, but at least in the next decade or so, there are hopeful answers coming for those of us who might not have mm -hmm. the willpower to avoid meat but also don't want to be killing animals. Here's an action step for me mm. going forward is a learning research action step. We have not talked. So we just imagined and assessed the status quo, which is, look, there, to provide for the demand of all this meat, there's had to be this factory farming industry. So actually, like, Clint is not um, diminishing the vegetable supply of the food options for u.s citizens because i'm not eating them right now i'm yeah. only eating meat yeah so imagine like i think we would need to also imagine this alternative vision of just imagine you're a world with no factory farms mm. and all of us need to get all of our calories from these plants and not just a handful like it seems like what we were saying earlier there's a whole bevy that you kind of would need to throw in to be to, balanced and to have a healthy yeah. diet along with the supplement mm -hmm. deal of like vitamin b12 i've i've heard is like one of those things that you're not going to find in vegetation you need to take a pill for every day to yeah. or something to make sure you have it so that's when i i just don't know what the details of that are and if there are other worries associated mm. with how, like yeah, yeah transitioning our entire agriculture <laughs> over to that yeah and it w uh, yeah it would be a big change i think it will be a big change and uh, i know i know i'm pretty certain even in those documentaries that are anti meat basically mm -hmm. would concede that look even in uh crop production there are quite a bit of animals killed in that process like sure. these huge threshers going through and chopping up little rodents or yeah. whatever pesticides that give you the yield you would need to feed us currently with vegetables let alone everyone only eating vegetables and of course other mm -hmm. grains and such uh w w would kill life non-plant life as well it might be that almost anything we do in the world is going to kill some non-plant life okay you know what i mean building highways uh, but then that makes me think that you have to actually go with the consequentialist model because there are animals, let's say rodentia, mm -hmm. that to me at least seem like on par with a chicken. Again, I'm not yeah, around yeah. either of them much at all, but they're both kind of like just jittery looking around. They don't know what the heck's going on and they're getting owned by either system. Now, the rodent one is much less uh, machinistic. And like have there's a whole sequence like we're not running them through a conveyor belt and doing stuff to them like we are the chicken. Mm -hmm. But it would still like I don't know they live out in these fields and you would still think total number though of like suffering conscious creatures would be far less. Oh, 
tilling a field of rodents mm-hmm. once. But, but in the very least, is it fair to say that rights are violated across the board if we're talking about rights? And then at, the, at yeah, some point, so. it's like, well, what does it even mean to be a right? I thought yeah. that the whole point was that you if don't... If we can just violate them when we want to till a field. Yeah. Yeah, I know what you're saying. So I think that... The temptation for me as a addict... Someone who... Well, call me an addict, if you will. I will, yeah. To someone who's addicted to eating animal flesh. Uh, I... I want to just kind of jump off the train there and be like, oh, see, it happens We're going anyway. to violate right side of the way, <laughs> so I'll keep eating my bacon. I know that's what you'd love. <laughs> Look, I, I do think lab-grown meat might be your savior here. Because it's coming. Yeah. It or, well, it's here. It exists. It's. Uh, did we talk about this on the potty before? In like the five, uh, some upcoming technologies? I can't remember if we did or not. No, those not, episodes, not, not quite. Lab-grown meat, if you don't know what this is, is, or it's sometimes called cultured meat, is they, t- they take a biopsy uh, from a living animal, like a cow or something, and then grow like a cell culture that grow a muscle in a lab. They grow the flesh there, but without a nervous system attached and a brain attached. And it's clearly there's no killing of an animal involved, no suffering involved. Mm-hmm. Um, but you could still potentially get grow whatever cut of meat you want. You could grow ribeye, grow amazing filet mignon, whatever you want. Um, and that's not just a pipe dream. That's partially happening. So the, uh, when's the last you've looked at it? Yeah, last I looked at it in December 2020. So this past December, some cultured uh, chicken nuggets were sold in Singapore. Oh. So that's when it hit the market. I think some deliveries have been made in California. Hmm. Cult- cultured seafood. Like I'd love su- to try one. Sushi and stuff. Yeah. So it's coming. Uh, there's Right now there's a debate going on. In fact, I'm pretty sure the government or some legislative body just put, asked for public comment on how these things should be labeled in grocery stores like should it be should it be mm. very transparent that this is lab grown meat versus what would you call it natural meat or do you just call it all meat or well, there's a whole war how should we brand that so happening. they're trying to figure all of that out now but the idea is that in mm. yeah five to ten years or whatever you go to giant eagle walmart and in the meat section right next to your whatever meat will Steak. be this cultured meat uh, I don't know if it'll be more. I assume it will be more expensive in the end. But what really? Well, uh, sorry. I assume it will be more expensive to begin with until the whole thing scales. Sure, sure, sure. As new technologies normally are. Right. Um, but I would imagine that, and I don't know much. I'm not a scientist. Yeah. I would imagine that this kind of technology would allow you to farm vertically as well as you wouldn't just need acres and acres of space to put cows. You could grow vegetables or lab-grown cult- like cultured meat vertically as well so maybe mm-hmm. there's a way you can save on land and real estate or whatever there so it's coming um and i would have i don't think i'd have I any problem eating good. cultured meat i think it would t- i think it would be indistinguishable that's the goal that's the, that's like, the goal that's this, the this is not like impossible burger where yeah, it's like t- tell people the difference so like you can go to melt or some of these places and get an impossible burger or what's the other one beyond meat which are mm. like these meat substitutes so that's it's made from plants it's made from it's plant-based meat substitutes. But they've really crafted it to make it look... It's supposed to look like meat. It's supposed to smell like meat. It's supposed to taste like meat. They don't really. (laughs) I found the... I think it was Impossible Burger 1.0 tasted a bit nutty to me. I think their most recent iteration is pretty good. It's pretty convincing. Mm. Like, I can happily eat an Impossible Burger. But you can tell it's not... You can tell it's not meat meat. Yeah. Looks like it. Doesn't quite taste like it. Mm. It's really a vehicle for the sauce and seasonings, but... I think the cultured meat would be indistinguishable. Another uh, comeback I've heard just w- back when I was, I taught this in an ethics class. Mm. You know, I've, Did you? How about, far you've come. <laughs> about why it's not good. Isn't that something? Uh, one, one argument to be made is, well, look, uh, I just get really full. It's a more bang for my buck to eat meat. It's more cost effective. Keeps me going. And then when you launch into that whole economic thing with how I'm spending my money... Oh, uh, it just confuses the topic more. Totally. And like you've got dependents and you've got a budget to manage, Can and all you... these other goods. I'm managing the one thirtieth of a chicken's suffering is just tough to like. And because some of this, am, am I right about this? That some of it is subsidized. Absolutely, that's the big comeback. Yeah. Is uh, yeah, it's artificially priced low through different political machinations that mm-hmm. have. Made it that I way. I mean, eggs are really cheap, man. You think about how cheap it is to get eggs. It's like a dollar for a dozen. Mm. And what had to go into that? Like a chicken actually had to lay 12 eggs. Yeah, so just to be clear, our government is 
paying for that with tax dollars. So yeah. you, someone is paying for that yeah. and is giving that to the businesses to shore up the deficiency that they would have if, if they all t- they got were the money that you paid at the grocery store. That's right. That's right. So in a world, imagine that, like in a, and it's already like gone way up from inflation. Like oh, yeah. I, I've, I've limited my meat consumption due to just the recent really? price hikes. Yeah. I mean, it's tough to find like even like a steak that you would want to have mm-hmm. for less than like thirteen ninety nine yeah. a pound. Yeah. Yeah. And so imagine that, like, I don't know how, what quite the data is on the subsidies, but imagine it being like, you can really have meat for less than $18 a pound. Now people would buy less meat. They would buy less, and now other options are looking yeah, more more attractive. Yeah. yeah, let me just really gin up these broccolies and right we'll whatever it. it is, and we'll make eggplant parmesan tonight. Yeah. yeah, we'll make it work. Yeah. So all these things are. Um, I felt. I don't know. It just makes it really. They, they've made it really difficult for me to choose the right thing. Well, especially again when you've got when you talk about budget, you've got dependents. Are you going to buy supplements for all your kids as well? That's another rationalization too, is the child thing. Mm. I I am much less convinced that veganism is a healthy lifestyle for... Developing child? Yeah. Mm. I just don't know. I've I've heard things about it not being, you know, um, particularly like some of the dairy items, but... And some of it, there's probably also, there might not be a one-size-fits-all approach. Like, there's... There's people who you said you're basically on a carnivore diet. I know Jordan Peterson and his daughter have had some Swear by au- autoimmune disease that like the only solution is just eat meat. Anything mm-hmm. else we get really sick. So I don't know if there's a one size fits all for me. Yeah. Where are we at? What are we doing? I think I'm, I don't, I don't know if I'm ready to go full vegan. I'd give vegetarianism another go there. I didn't find that to be too taxing for me to make that switch. Hmm. That wasn't too bad. It was really the the dairy and the cheese, like giving up those. Just to, to knock out that whole arena, you really leave a gap. No yogurt, no ice cream, no cheese. I'm sure there's there must be vegan versions of all of those soy versions of milk and right. yogurt and stuff. And even though mm. that, like, I've and like when I was in that space too, I was reading more about like the health effects of soy. Yeah. And like I think even like the vegan proponents are like, yeah, man, you can't just like substitute all like don't overdo it on all the soy. the soy. Like that's not good for you, and it lower. I think it lowers like some hormonal stuff for both yeah. genders. Or, yeah. Um, I wonder if Brad, my brother's a vegan. I wonder if he's doing supplements and stuff. I should ask him. Mm-hmm. I would give it another go. Look, it's been a few years. Yeah. When did I do it? Maybe 2017, 2018. I did six months of vegetarianism before I fell off the wagon. Maybe this episode is an impetus for me to try yeah. round two. And one of my good buddies who is a vegan and a consequentialist, which is, here's a perk of thinking of this topic in that way. Mm. He's like, yeah, man, my view of morality is such that uh, I just want there to be less animal suffering and hopefully like less at your hands. So if you, yeah. um, that is, and so to say, any degree is better th- that you lessen your meat consumption is that much morally better mm-hmm. and maybe you're not precisely per- to the degree that yeah you and maybe it. you're not we're don't think of the please don't think of this as an all or nothing thing yeah because you might shoot yourself in the foot and fail to adopt the habit so maybe your first step is like one day a week i'm yeah. gonna go vegetarian you don't have to do like that's a cold turkey all or nothing that's a false notion that you absolutely have to change Maybe for some things. Well, because to your point, heroin. once it was like, <laughs> yeah, methamphetamine. <laughs> but yeah, there was like permission I gave myself once I went to Australia and had some sausage rolls and meat pies. Like, well, I guess I'm eating meat again, boys. So screw it. Right. And I completely reverted to my previous mm-hmm. diet, which was unnecessary. And on the, so on the yeah. flip side, when you're trying to change, hey, maybe you still eat a lot of meat, but by not having it one day a week, you've reduced your footprint, mm-hmm. if you will, by one seventh. Yeah. And if you're convinced by these arguments, like you, not not if you are, um, the morality is obtains whether you think <laughs> anything about it at all. Yeah. But just yeah, yeah. if it happens to be true, then uh, you've done one seventh morally better, mm-hmm. and that's worth doing. You yeah. Know? I ju- I'm. Is living- there something to that? I think there is, and I think. I think I will begin enacting it in my life. I've just I've found that I'm living with this cognitive dissonance of 
I consider myself on one level to really be an animal lover. I bloody love animals. Mm -hmm. I really do. You do. So why do I eat them? You can attest. You do. I love creatures. So why do I eat them? Yeah, it's a problem. I need to become more consistent. And the real, like I've seen people try to like shy away from this and I don't want to, like I just really enjoy the taste of them and eating them. Yeah. That's why. Yeah, yeah. No, you're That is ultimately it. That's it. Yeah. So I like how it feels in my mouth. I like the texture. Uh, like the smell of it while yep, it's cooking. I've, been gro- I've grown up smelling it and that says hungry dinner time. Your condition, yeah. It, yeah. There's a lot that goes into it. So. Yeah. Well, I appreciate you being willing to be honest <laughs> and wait. Okay, into I'm gonna make no. I'm gonna make a declaration. Are you doing something? Yep. Uh, I was not gonna pressure you into any kind of. Here, here, I'm doing it uh, for the month of October. Yep. I am going to do one day a week, uh, no meat. Okay, which day? Uh, what would work best? Because we record on Fridays, I could check in with you every episode. Be like, mate, have you eaten any meat? I today? would do it on Thursdays. Okay. Friday is family night okay. at the Neptune house. And that's and where you we normally cook a pig on a spit <laughs> every Friday. <laughs> Not quite, but yeah. Yeah. Okay. Thursdays. I'm going to take that step. Great. And see how I feel about that. I will do it too. Yeah. On Thursdays. At least. Uh, <laughs> or pick your own day. I'm trying, like, I don't want to one up you. I do feel called to do more than just one day a week. Oh, but, but I'm not no, trying no, to one up no. you on the podcast. No, you can. <laughs> no, do that. <laughs> okay. 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 I am going What's to, your commitment? for the month of October, I'm going to bracket it. I don't want to bite off more than I can chew. Mm-hmm. There's going to be, I'm only going to eat meat two days a week. Oh my gosh. The dude. other five, I won't. <gasps> so it'll be like my cheat days if I feel like I really need them. And if I don't feel like I really need them, I'm going to skip them. We'll see how that goes. Oh, I mean, I did word. six months of it before, so yeah. it can be done again. I know you said don't flip the whole switch at once, so I'm giving myself the wiggle room of two days a week. Okay. If someone invites me out to a burger joint, I don't have to like... So uh, what's today? The 24th? Yeah. When okay, so it'll start, start in like a week or so. Week. Yeah. And we'll have to just remember to check in on I wonder if I check in on it there five days a week. <laughs> That's a lot, dude. <laughs> we'll and see. don't you have like a baby coming in meal trains and you I ha- see meal trains. See, people make me a lasagna. What am I just going to pick the meat out? That's the that thing. seems to do a disservice. Yeah, but it's been paid for at that point. Then it's a waste. They've already paid for the meat, and I chuck it in the bin. That's tragic. I now that's where I've heard my buddy. That's where he calls it a form of social protest. He won't do he it. He won't do it because he wants to send the message. Yeah. But, Fair enough. All right, let's try it. Month of, and we'll just check in and see how it went. If you'd like, if you uh, right now, I'll, I'll allow you to amend your statement to uh, exempt you from any meal train dishes. So your commitment would only out. be to non-meal train dishes. I will not go out of my way and purchase meat or eat it okay. five days a week for October. Okay. And then we'll just check in on that experiment, <laughs> see how it went. Could we stick to it or not? For any of... Yeah, dude. For any I, vegetarians or I mean, vegans I'm thinking watching, about Henry listening to this and being exactly. like, "Oh, that is so pathetic." You guys. I know, I know. Yeah. I'm sorry, Henry, but we are. Trying. This is where I am. We're being honest about it. I could. I, I'm bad. I could be better, and yeah. I'm gonna try this one step. You're gonna become to one get... seventh better, mm-hmm. yeah. and see how I feel. Like just that, even that little moral mm-hmm. hat on the back. Yeah. Maybe I'll like to do that a little bit more. Yeah. And get all the way to zero uh, percent. All right. So. <laughs> Great. Well, I hope this conversation was helpful for you. Maybe you want to join us in making some kind of a... Just trying to be honest. Dip you your know? toes into veganism, vegetarianism. Um, you know where to reach us. If you want to write into the show, you've got a question or a comment, you can always leave that on this YouTube video if you're watching online. Otherwise, you can write into the show mailbag at opentotruth.com or you can subscribe to our blog by visiting... The opentotruth.com slash blog. Oh, yeah. Or slash subscribe if you want it in your email yep. list. You All free. Anyway, we want to hear from you. Uh, let us know what your pledge is and we'll uh, yes. we'll talk soon. <laughs> All right. All right, stay curious.